Welcome back to the Caldwell account. Folks, you know what is the position of this program? That people who are in public service, politicians, appointed senators, whatever, well, happy to have them. We think the Senate should be elected, whatever. But we think that if you were in public service, it ought to be just that. And in practical terms, that means you shouldn't be getting a better deal than the rest of us. You shouldn't be getting a better pension situation. You shouldn't be getting all kinds of perks. You shouldn't be swooshing past us in limos so the rest of us have to pay for our own gas and drive ourselves to work. It shouldn't work that way because we're all in this country together. You're not our overlords. You are ostensibly public servants. You're a, one of us. You're among us, okay? And you may know that we've talked about it a couple times this week regarding pensions and the money that you and me and everybody else puts into for um, people who've been in Parliament, even for a very short period of time. Well, we were calm about it, but it turns out the situation is actually worse than we thought. To discuss this, we are joined from Ottawa by Derek Vilderbrand. He is the acting federal director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. That it makes you sound like Bob Ray, Derek, acting federal director. Is that... Is that a new well, thing? Well, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation is doing better than the Liberal Party these <laughs> days, so I won't take offense to that comment. Nice. All right, I feel like we're close enough. I can give you the, give you the business every once in a while. Now, this report's come out, Derek, and we had thought that we were putting in four bucks for every one dollar that parliamentarians were putting into their pension plan. But this report, quietly tabled according to the Hill, Hill Times, um, we're putting actually $5.50 in mm -hmm. for every one dollar the MPs are putting into their pensions. What do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, this new report really, uh, a lot of people expected maybe even to come even uh, further into the dead of summer. Uh, this is not released with a lot of fanfare because it's not the kind of things that MPs want us to know. Uh, it's worse than we thought, uh, although it's not including uh, interest. If you take interest into account, this thing can uh, actually get much worse since we can actually look uh, in the future about calculating what that would be when you take interest payments into account. Uh, you know, the comments uh, that a lot of MPs made towards this today were indicative. You know, you find a lot, there's a lot of partisanship in Ottawa, especially before the election, but they all seem to agree on one thing. There's party unanimity when it comes to protecting MPs' gold-plated pensions. Uh, I know for a fact that not all, not all MPs actually support this. There are a few little rogues hidden here and there, uh, but they're not able to speak up because you're not going to be the most popular guy in Parliament if you stand up and try and crash the party. Yeah, fine, but who cares about being popular in Parliament? Right is right. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. This is, you know, it's an incredibly extravagant pension plan that, you know, Canadians are beginning to become aware of. Uh, the Taxpayers Federation's been talking about this for a long time. After every federal and provincial election, we always release the calculated pensions and severance payments of defeated and retired politicians. This time was a bit different. Uh, when we released our numbers after the May 2nd election, uh, it, in it included a few individuals that uh, really rubbed Canadians in the wrong way, and that included a pension for Mr. Patriotism himself, Gilles Duceppe, mm -hmm. of $141,000, according to our estimates. And, uh, you know, everyone knows these are crazy plans, but it really, really put a, f a fine point on it that we are giving people who want to destroy this country uh, more than $100,000 uh, for pensions when the vast majority of Canadians have no uh, real pension plan th for themselves other than the CPP, and uh, their own private savings. Exactly so. And, and we had Papa Bear Mark Bonacoski, a national editorial writer for Sun Media on earlier this week, talking about that number, that $141,000 that you, Derek, me, everybody watching, that we are putting into Gilles Duceppe's bank account every single year. And there seemed to be very little doubt that he would cash every single check after yeah. a career dedicated to breaking up this country. And you know what? Even if that weren't the focus of his career, like you just said, the rest of us have to invest for our retirement, and we, ha we don't get anything like this. Why mm -hmm. on earth should people who are supposed to be public servants, why should they get deals that are so much better than what you or I or anybody watching us gets? Yeah, well, there's, there's two parts of this. Um, a lot of, what well, you know, what MPs say to this is, uh, first of all, we're entitled to it. We work hard, we make sacrifices. Yeah, you know what, you do. But so does everyone else with a job. We all work hard, we all make sacrifices. We all fight through rush hour and have to push and shove in the line to get ahead. You know, uh, MPs are not the only people in this country who work hard. They should be decently compensated, but not in a way that they have a pension plan that nobody else has. But it, it, in their defense, what they like to say is that, well, we shouldn't take away what we have. We should give everybody what we have. We need to bring everybody up. You know, if we did that, Greece would look like the most right-wing fiscal country conservative in the world, uh, fiscally conservative uh, country in the world. It, it, it's, it would absolutely bankrupt us. It's impossible to do. It's a red herring that the politicians put out there that's saying, we shouldn't take away what we have. We need, need to improve everybody's pensions. The right thing to do is to do what uh, the Minister of Finance, Jim Flaherty, did uh, before this uh, before budget, I think it was in the last budget, was ideas of extending the tax-free savings account, uh, doubling it. First they brought it in, now mm -hmm. they're talking about doubling it in the future. That's going to help people save for their retirement. They're talking about having a, uh, 
a, a uh, government-run um, registered uh, a po pooled pension plan, which is a private plan, but it can be administered by the government so that small businesses can get in without having the overhead costs. That's a good. Those are good ideas for individuals to save for their own retirement. But when they say we should just need to give everybody these big pension plans, it's a red herring because they know. Even a new Democrat knows it's impossible. <laughs> even a new Democrat. Who are these maniacs, Derek, who think we could ever, any country could afford to put $5.50 into a pension for every $1 the worker puts in? What are we going to do? Go out to the money tree and just start putting it in? It doesn't work. Like, the real world doesn't work like that. I want to say one other thing. You mentioned, you know, we make sacrifices. That's what they say. We make sacrifices. That's the first argument. So you should reward us. I have very little sympathy, Derek, for people to try to say, well, I'm at the top of my profession, whatever it is, and if I were at the top of a different profession, I'd get paid X. It doesn't work like that. You don't have to do it. It is. We you're told public service and if you're gonna bellyache the whole time and say well I should get paid the same as the guy who runs the Royal Bank or whatever else you're whistling Dixie we heard it from swan hands by the way too congratulations on judging the Sunnies you made the right choice you know uh, you compare what I make to someone at the top of another profession well you're not at the top of another profession you chose this one live with it and don't expect a better deal Bonikowski said and I think I agreed with them how about the same deal for everybody and I it sure is shooting is not gonna be 550 from the taxpayers for every buck that a worker puts in yeah. Well, you know, what we should have, it's not unreasonable that there is a pension plan to begin with for MPs, but it should be brought in line with what is, uh, with regu with uh, the expectations of the private sector. You know, 70% of Canadians have no private pension plan at all. They have RSPs and they've got the CPP, and that's pretty much it. They've got to save on their own. Uh, but if we're going to have a pension plan for MPs, which most people don't, but if you're going to have a pension plan, it needs to be reformed and it needs to be reasonable. Rather than having uh, $5.50 from taxpayers for every $1 the politicians put in, it should be dollar for dollar. Taxpayers put in a dollar, politicians put in a dollar. And right now it's not even invested. It just goes into some piggy bank somewhere, and if there's a shortfall, taxpayers pick up the, pick up the bill. It should be invested. And if that investment does well, then the pension gets paid out. If it does poorly, well, then they have to suffer the consequences like the rest of us do when we have our own retirement plans. Yeah, a defined contribution rather than defined benefit come what may. And we got a jet, Derek, but I want to say one thing. You, you talked about Jim Flaherty expanding uh, the tax-free savings accounts. Fine, that's good. We said on this program, though, it's usually the same 25% or so of people who max out their RSP and max out their TFSAs. We think that if you, it's not, it's not enough to expand the room. I, I would be in favor of some kind of a top-up for young investors to use that asset of time to get people saving early for their pensions. I don't like the government yeah. writing checks, but that's the best asset that young people have is time. And to the extent we can help them invest and save for retirement early, that's a good, uh, that's a good way to go about it in the position of this program. Derek Fildebrand, Acting Federal Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Thanks, buddy, for being here. Always awesome to be on the account. All right, man.